Hey Cool Worlds, David here. This month we're celebrating the one year anniversary of this YouTube channel. So I first just want to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed and supported our channel thus far. Let me also especially thank one of our younger viewers, Zachary Baitso, who sent me this awesome card in the post this week, including some artist's impressions of exoplanets. So, you know, thank you so much, Zach. This really made my day. You're awesome, dude. I'm going to send you something back in the post to you. So obviously over the last year on this channel, we've spoken quite a lot about planets. But today I want to ask the question, what really is a planet? Just recently, a group of scientists got together and wrote a paper challenging the official definition of what a planet is, as voted by, by the International Astronomical Union back in 2006. Now that was the infamous event which led to Pluto being demoted from being a planet to becoming a dwarf planet. So we went from nine to eight planets in the solar system. The IAU definition states that a planet is a celestial body that one, is in orbit of the sun, two, has sufficient mass for self-gravity to lead to a roughly spheroidal shape, and three, has cleared the neighborhood of its orbit. So Pluto satisfies one and two, but it fails that third criteria. So as I said, some authors have recently challenged this definition, one of them being Alan Stern, who is the boss of NASA's New Horizons mission, which actually flew by Pluto just recently in July 2015. When his mission launched back in January 2006, New Horizons was heading towards a planet. But then later that year, this vote came in and changed that. So it probably doesn't surprise you to learn that Allenson has been opposed to this change in definition really since the outset. Indeed, at the beginning of this paper, the authors state that their motivation really for, for challenging this definition is that in their view, the public seem to perceive non-planets as being less interesting and perhaps therefore less worthwhile exploring than genuine official planets. So that's kind of their beef here, is that they want to change that because they're worried that we'll stop exploring these dwarf worlds. Now I'm not saying that's not true, but it's also somewhat anecdotal. It's not exactly a census or survey of public opinion on this. And actually I think one could reasonably argue that public interest in Pluto has not diminished as a result of this name change. In fact, quite the contrary. The public are incredibly interested in this name changing debacle and their entire t-shirts, books, TV shows, and are now, I suppose, YouTube videos about this exact topic. Motivations aside though, it is certainly true that there are problems with the current IAU definition of a planet. Here are four common criticisms often levied at it. First off, what does this clearing the neighborhood really mean? I mean, there are small objects constantly being injected to the orbits of planets in our solar system. So, you know, strictly speaking, none of the planets are planets by that definition. Second off, the mass of a planet needed to clear its orbit is going to depend on how far away that planet is away from its host star. And this leads to a fairly unsatisfactory situation where if you move planets around, they suddenly cease to become planets and then become planets again at different distances. For example, if you take Mercury and you put it at Neptune's orbit, under some mathematical formulations of the IAU definition, it would actually no longer be classed as a planet anymore. Third, by demanding that planets have to be in orbit of the Sun and not some other star, it doesn't address any of the exoplanets discovered. So the thousands and thousands of exoplanets found so far have no classification. And actually in the language of the current definition, I could put a black hole or another giant star around the sun and it too would technically be called a planet under this definition. So that's kind of problematic. And fourth, it doesn't really deal with moons very well. For example, what if I had a binary planet, two twin Earths orbiting each other? Is that two planets or is that two moons? What if one's very slightly more massive than the other? Do we now have a planet moon or you know, where does the line be drawn? Another example of this is to take the case of the moon Ganymede, which orbits Jupiter. It's a very massive satellite. So massive in fact, that if Jupiter weren't there and it was just orbiting the sun, it would be classed as a planet by the IAU definition. So what happens if instead of doing that, I let Ganymede be in orbit of the sun and keep Jupiter there and have some kind of one-to-one -one orbital resonance, or I have some kind of horseshoe orbit or Trojan orbit. In these cases, it's not really clear whether this is now a moon or a planet or something else entirely. So yes, the IAU definition definitely has some problems. And to address this, the authors propose that a planet should now be called a celestial body which has never undergone nuclear fusion 
and has sufficient mass for itself gravity to lead to a spheroidal shape. So they've dropped orbiting the sun as a requirement and let everything round and non-fusing be called a planet. So that means that dwarf planets like Pluto, Eris, Maki Maki now all become planets again. Actually work done here at the Cool Woods Lab does lend support to this idea. Jing Jing Chen and I recently showed in a paper that everything from the most massive super Earths all the way down to the smallest objects big enough to be round follow a common mass radius trend. Mass and radius are two of the most fundamental properties you could possibly imagine casting a definition in terms of. So it does kind of lend to the idea that indeed there is no break between these planets and so-called dwarf planets right now. However, using the new definition just proposed, it means that objects like the moon, the moon, now would be classed as a planet. In fact, the total planet count in the solar system would go from eight to 110. And some people have levied that as a criticism against these authors' definition. But if you think about it, that's kind of a silly complaint. We can't say that this is no longer a planet because we can't be bothered to learn the names of 110 objects anymore. As an analogy, nobody would say that the periodic table of 118 elements needs to be shortened down to just a handful because otherwise there's no way we could possibly remember all of the elements. Adding this new criteria that the object has never undergone nuclear fusion definitely moves in the right direction in my opinion, but you know, it still has some problems. For example, Jupiter and Saturn and indeed all of the other planets in the solar system actually do fuse at a very, very, very low amount in their cores. It's just not enough to cause a runaway chain reaction. Probably the biggest hurdle for people accepting this definition is the idea of accepting moons as now being called planets. If you think about it, the word moon really defines an object's orbit and environment more than it does its intrinsic properties. In the same way, perhaps we should allow the word planet to take on that same kind of meaning, but just in juxtaposition to that of the word moon. This whole mess and ambiguity has led many astronomers to just try to get bored of this and started just calling planets and moons worlds, just for simplicity. Let's just call them worlds. In fact, that's the reason why my group and this channel is called the Cool Worlds Lab. Not cool planets, not cool moons. It's just easy if we just call them all worlds. Ultimately, it's pretty amazing that the public seem to care but what, at its core, is really an issue of taxonomical classification in the field of astronomy. I mean, think about that. It's amazing the public even care about that. But actually, most astronomers and planetary scientists really don't care about this issue too much at all. Pluto is Pluto. She's gonna be the same whatever you call it. It's still the same world. Nature does not care what labels we scribble down in our textbooks to call these things. Ultimately, a rose by any of the names still smells as sweet. So does it really matter what we call these things? If we as science educators do well on our job and explain to you, the public, why we think Pluto or whatever world we want to visit next is interesting and awesome, then ultimately the name and the definition, it doesn't matter, it becomes irrelevant. So those are my two cents on this subject. But as always, I really want to hear what you all think about this. Do you think that Pluto should be called a planet? Should the moon be called a planet? Does this question even matter? So thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. Hey, if you like our content and you wanna get more of it, make sure you click the subscribe button down below so you can get all of the latest videos from the Cool Wars Lab. So until next time, stay thoughtful and stay curious.